is a review of the Ibanez 5-string microbass. They also have a 4-string model of this and this, this is a great instrument for $200 and it's really amazing you can go in and just get something that costs so little that sounds so good. After getting this I basically took all my other basses, I have two others and I just kind of put them aside, I don't want to touch them because I love the sound of this but also the playability of a 5 of, of a short scale bass. Um, compared to the size of a 34 inch bass, get that here, this is significantly smaller. So you can see this fits on the screen. The 34 inch goes way off when it's far longer than the other. And basically, what that means is this is much, much easier to play. It's, you can do a lot more with it. Where I can go up here and I can do one finger, one fret, all the way on the top of the B string. No problem. Sounds great all over. No dead spots. Nothing like that. And you know, I've never had so much fun after 15 years of playing basses once I got this a couple of months ago. So this is one of the favorite things I have ever bought. And I wanted to put up a review of this. Not that I really do music stuff on my channel is because I, I think that there should be more attention to the short scale basses um, because they are much easier to play. They are more accessible to people. They have a great um, rich sound to them that they should be more well known. I didn't even know that short scale basses were out there you know, until last year and you know, once I started looking at it I just figured I wanted to you know, try it because I've always had trouble playing the 34 inch bass because actually my pinky is kind of short so in terms of some of the stretching I just can't do it. You know, when I first started to learn bass I was really given some very bad advice basically to do one finger one fret and that oh your hand is going to stretch. Um, the fact of the matter is some people have bigger hands than others and if you have a large body hand and the 34 inch base fits you well then you know that's fine but for many people the 34 inch base um, is just going to be uncomfortable it's the size is going to make it difficult to play and when you have something like a short scale base you know you can go online and look at reviews of this and also there's a Jaguar short scale bass and people who have it love it and then because it's a little bit different than the standard 34 inch you're going to have certain of naysayers come out and you know say nonsense to discourage people from getting a short scale bass and you know this is the bottom line people should play the instrument that feels good that's they feel comfortable with that they like to play they um, if the 34 inch is really too big for someone they shouldn't um, just go on struggling with something because of the size and you know, if you don't know what a, a short scale bass is if you haven't played one then you might just think well a 34 inch bass that's what it is and I have to learn how to adapt to it but after playing this what's the point of struggling on if something's bigger when you can get a great sound and playability out of a short scale bass. This is 28.6 inches. Other ones are a, a little um, longer. This is basically as short as it gets. So you can go online and find some naysayers who want to cut in and discourage people from using short scale and I, I think for no reason just like it doesn't matter what you're talking about whether it's music or, or sports or ideology or whatever. Someone has a different idea, wants to do something differently, and then you have these people coming in saying, no, you can't do that, and they'll come up with a lot of, of stupid excuses. Um, the one thing that, that I've read several places that was holding me back from running out and getting this was that the strings are floppy. Uh, if someone actually has played a short scale bass they will know that's nonsense. Um, the strings are not floppy. Are they as tight as a 34 inch? Uh, no, they're not as tight but they're not noticeably very loose or anything. It's not, it's um, marginal. It's not something that you really notice while playing at all. I know I, I use a pick maybe it doesn't bother me much but even with the fingers it it doesn't feel floppy when, when I play it. So it, it's not floppy. That That's a misnomer about short scale basses. There, there's no string floppiness um, problem. 
Although you do need to use strings f built for a short scale bass. I don't know what it would sound like if you put um, long scale strings on a short scale bass. Um, but, but I haven't experienced that at all, and, and I don't know why people would say that except um, that they, they've never played it. Um, I've read intonation problems, which doesn't exist. Um, this B, my B is in tune here and here. The whole thing is per is perfectly in tune on all the strings. Um, yeah, did I have to set this up or raise the action and do some adjustment when I got it? Yeah. Okay, I had to do that when I got um, my other basses. When I had my, got my four string, yeah, that was a little bit off. But when I got the, that five string, I, I had to change the setup on that a little bit. I, I raised the action and everything, so I just like higher action. Um, so yeah, you might have to change the setup, especially for something that's $199. Uh, but yeah, you just get a setup right, and there's no problem. Like, you buy anyone buys an instrument, they're probably going to have to set it up a little bit for how they like to play it. Um, so um, basically, like, who for who would a short scale bass be good for? Well, obviously, yes, for younger people, um, children. Of course, like if, if someone is a small stature, why would you buy them something that's 34 inches when they can get something just as good and more playable at 28 inches or 20.6 or 30 inches? That, that doesn't make any sense. You know, most people who pick up an instrument to learn, they're not going to follow through on it. So you should make it as easy as possible. Um, yeah, people with smaller hands, you know, of course, um, if, when doing research, I came across this whole message forum um, where someone had small hands and there was all this uh, stupid advice and people saying don't use a short scale base and, and you know, the nonsense, if someone has small hands, of course, uh, some type of hand injury, yes, but aside from all that, it is not, this isn't a lesser instrument, it's not for people who only ha are in these categories, what if you just like the feel of a short scale bass better? What if you like the sound? There, um, you know, this is as much of an instrument as any other bass, and after using this, it's kind of perplexing why it is that you um, go to a store and you see a whole wall, they can have hundreds of 34 inch basses, and maybe you'd find one of these if they have any short scale. Yeah, it, it should really be that if someone goes to buy a bass, even especially like for the first time, and they're looking at it and they have a small hand, that there should be several models of short scale basses there, and there should be someone there smart enough to say, "Hey, you know, you have small hands. Why don't you try this?" And you don't see that. It's kind of like 34 inches became the standard because when the bass guitar came out in 1951, um, Fender decided that was the best sounding the best length for the sound they were looking for in 1951. That does not mean that here today in 2016, or if you watch this video, that the 34 inch bass is going to give you the best sound for what you want. Uh, so that's it. I'm going to put a link to a website on um, entertainment.net where he really goes through everything about the um, short scale bass people who've used that, you know, you just list people who's used um, short scale basses um, in their careers, who Paul McCartney, um, Jack Bruce of Cream, Bill Wyman, Rolling Stones, Glenn Kornick, Jethro Tull. So it is, yeah, yeah, there is a big time professional musicians who've used short scale basses and they somehow, they have problems with it. Uh, so this is great. Um, other thing is if you want to go down to B, I was very surprised with how good the B string sounded on this. Um, it, I thought it sounded uh, much better even on my my other five string and I, I thought it sounded a lot better when I put a B string when I tuned low on a four string bass. That's just some playing around on the B string. This is, uh, by the way, a dry sound going right to a USB. So I'm not running it through any amps or, or effects or anything like that. 
Um, there, there are people online who, for some reason, will try to review uh, a guitar, bass, or whatever, and you know, if they're not running, not running it through effects, but you see they have it plugged up to this amp head, and, and there's this big thing as if that that's going to mean anything. So anyway, this is a absolutely awesome instrument, and I want to put this online because if more people were we are short scale basses. If more people weren't discouraged from buying them, then I think that there would be more available. Uh, right now, if you do want to get a, a short scale vase, there aren't many options either. You buy the, the, the Ibanez micro bass, there's Jaguar, short scale, I think there might be one other, and that's about it, unless you want to um, start spending a lot of money on some more specialized or customized um, bases, or, or you have to start, you know, look, looking for um, th th things that are definitely at a higher range. Um, so I would like there to be more options, and um, that's about it. I guess I'll play a little, um, see the sound on on the rest of this, and remember, this is just the dry sound. Okay, and um, that's that. Thank you. 